Okay, so all right. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. So there isn't going to be a Q and A. You guys have, that have worked with me before. I'll share a little bit, then you'll share with the person next to you, and then you'll come up to the mics and you'll share and I'll interact with you and we'll do that several times. So if there is an empty seat next to you, I want you to scooch in because I'd like you to be able to have a partner. Everybody have a partner. There, oh, that's so good. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> kind of knuckle in. Okay, good. So last night, I was waking up, you know, I was like, oh, am I nervous? Am I excited? And I, I just really kind of wanted to sleep. And I realized, I don't know if this ever happens to you, I, you get woken up for a reason, right? So there's like something to be communicated to you. So I, I said, well, what do you, you know, what, what's up? What do you want me to know before I talk with these people? And this is what I got. So I always bring fresh bagels. I don't have everything pre-baked and give you stale stuff. So what I heard intuitively that this particular group of people at this particular time requires is to be cleared from interference with their capacity to receive fully their multidimensional wealth and understand deeply their worth and how those relate together. So interference, interfere, like, hey, you want to live here? I don't know if you could make it. I don't know. Why would you want to start a company now? I don't know. I don't like money. Money is a little bit. I don't know. Right? Kind of like that. Or maybe yours are, oh, I don't want to be like my father. I don't want to be like my mother. Or, or maybe you have something like, um, I don't want people to actually know how much money I have because then they won't think I'm a cool yogi. Like maybe you're actually a really wealthy yogi. Like it happens. It happens. You know, so there's all these different, or it could be um, if, I, if I have money, then I have all that responsibility. And I maybe don't have to deal with all the things that maybe I came to deal with. So you guys, I turn 53. Next month, I'm going to be a grandmother. And yeah, I know. It's kind of like, wow. So, so for those of you that want to have children, already have children, are building a legacy, you're, have you noticed that we're entering the very foundational moments of a new economic order? Have you been kind of noticing that? You know, the rise of social entrepreneurism, um, the use of all these different health modalities in the world, and it's at a time when we face serious, serious things. So, what I'm about to work with you on, with the principle Wealth Follows Worth, it comes from one of the sets of principles that are in the I Goal You Body of Knowledge, where we train and develop leaders. So there are many people in the room here who are I Goal You leaders. They've given over a year of their life, and many of them several years, to study the art of um, how to support another person in a goal. So that's where we get the I goal you. So first of all, we want to get people to be able to have a vision and a goal, which is a pretty big thing to do, right? Have a lot of you have done that with me and other people, vision and goals, right? And then, and then it's weird sometimes to talk to other people about it because, oh, why are you setting a goal? Why don't you just go with the flow? Or then there's the people that say, um, uh, well, what if it doesn't work? Or what about the people that that in the unsaid communicate, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> right? So as you're out to transmit your future, people are transmitting all these different things back and forth to you, and you need to get clear, right? Does this make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. So you're a multidimensional receiver and monitor for all this that's in the unsaid and the said. And so if you're out to be helping create a new economic order, as I'd really love to see by the time I pass from this planet, because that's what I'd love for my grandchildren and my children, then y'all got to get after some stuff. <laughs> Did you see how I kept that PG? <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. I caught myself right there. So, <laughs> so there's some things to do. Now, in the I go, you work right here, personal power and wholeness. Right here, strategic instinct. And out here, this is where we're working now, global perspectives and possibility. So wealth follows worth is one of the six principles from that set of work, which we'll have more up on the website when I get to it. I've been like traveling around and doing stuff with you guys. So <laughs> wealth follows worth. Here's, here's part of the inspiration of it. I, I want you guys to, to know this. So have any of you ever done the, you know, the medicine cards with Jamie Sams, those cool cards where you draw the animals and it's based on Native American tradition? You know, that was... 
Oh, you, yeah, that's like from the 70s, which is my dress, kind of like a theme. So <laughs> go back and find her work. But what she talks about is that in the Native American tradition, so this is uh, America, I'm not sure if it's also true for the First Nations here in Canada, um, there are uh, three pathways to illumination. The first one is represented by the pottery shard, which she finds on a meditation hike, which represents creativity. So illumination through creativity. So many of you are artists. The second path is represented by a snake skin. And that's the path of transformation. So many of you are on the path of transformation. You've probably gone to a lot of sessions and things like that here at Wanderlust that are about either creativity or transformation. The third path, which I don't believe enough work has been written about and, and deals with, is the path through the authentic exchange of energy, and it's represented by a coin. It's about money. And in the Hindu tradition, those of you that study that, because you're yogis, um, there's the path of the householder, right? So you could go be a sannyasi, but then there's all the people left that are like just trying to run a business and find their path to illumination and raise their children. So this piece of work today is dedicated to the people that want to have a life, be in the world, create and share money, create and share ideas, have children and have the world be different for them having done that. They do not need to run away and go off to a mountaintop. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but if you're in this room, it's very likely that you have come to do something concrete and real that's about to alter the future for many other people. Now, I just, I'm curious, if you find yourself in that category of people, I just want to know, like, not like you have to raise your hand, but I just want to know, like, are you up to build a business or change something or, you know, you want to have families, you want to be working in the world? Okay, and, and because we want to honor them, are there people that want to go to, to monasteries and to um, stay there? Yeah, see, we need a few people because they'll keep the beacon out. And then the rest of us will be like, okay, whoa, slogging it through. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if there were past lives, I probably had many of them um, in that kind of isolation. I think it's easier to work. That's why, of course, I have four children and we've had all these businesses. We've had businesses fail. We've had businesses succeed. So I have something to say about this. Okay, let me see. What else do I want to tell you? So interfere. Okay, now I need Erin. Uh, She's going to come up. So what we're going to do in a, in a moment, and she's going to need a pen. Oh, you got a pen? Oh, man, she's on it. You guys know Erin Anderson. You want to go to her yoga classes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we are um, we're going to create a distinction called whole wealth. So one of the aspects of your wealth is money, finances, and there's many, many other things. So what I want you to do is, is raise your hand in popcorn style. We're going to create, wh what is wealth to you? So, you know, it could be like health. So let's put up health. But So let's get some hands up. Yes. Freedom. Freedom. There's one here. Yes. Knowledge. Knowledge. Abundance. Yeah. Abundance. Transformation. Transformation. What else? IRA. IRA. Yeah, like having, yeah, like a little security, like a little, yeah, a plan. Right. Family. Security. Security. Yes. Choices and options. Choices and options. A wealth of choices and options. So I'm going to talk to us a little bit on that one to give her a chance. Oh, my, she's fast. Go, Aaron. You know, my father was an entrepreneur. And uh, he had a, a colleague. And my dad was at a bar one day talking to the guys about a new idea that he had that he was going to build. And his friend Larry said, Ken, God. Ken, don't be sharing all your ideas. And my dad said, there's more where that came from. So he was never in fear. There's always ideas and options. Yeah, here. Opportunity. Opportunity. Peace. Peace. Contribution. Contribution. Love. Love. Where's my clean air, clean water people? <laughs> Let's get those on there. Clean air, clean water. What else? What else is wealth to you? Yes, in the back. Creativity. Creativity. Happiness. Happiness. There was one here. Future. Future. Yes. Relationships. Relationships. Like, and what kind? Like friendships. Like friendships, like a wealth of friends. Uh, I was speaking with 
um, one of our participants today and she's moving to a new place and like what does it take to land on your feet in a new place and generate the idea of there's a wealth of new friends that I can have in this new place like that's what you're going to be up to yeah what else good food I, I'm like like that had to be on the second column <laughs> but really like that you know to like, do you ever just, you know, you go in the store and, like, you can buy that. I'm like, oh, God. I've been a single parent, and I haven't always been able to do that, so I get excited sometimes about that. Okay, go ahead. Resources? Resources, yes. Fun. Fun. Time. Time. Time is on my side. <laughs> yes, it is being time rich. Jess and I always talk about, they got five minutes, I'm time rich get a lot of transformation done in five minutes because it's all in the now. How many nows is that? Now, 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 now. It's a lot. Okay. <laughs> travel. Yeah, like how do we, oh, travel. Travel. Yes. Clarity. Clarity. Yes. Eight hours of sleep. Eight hours of sleep. Have you been wealthy in that lately or do, you, do we need to catch up? Good girl, good girl. Yes. Beauty. beauty. Say a little more about that. Beauty, like. Everywhere. Beauty everywhere. Yeah. Like so beautiful gardens, um, thoughtfulness, the beauty, the arrangement. Yeah, let's get, yes. Our, our furry little companions. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh. Things bright and beautiful, right? All creatures, great and small. Yeah. Being safe. Being safe. Yeah. Like being able to live without the fear of crime. Like, say a little more about safe. What safe is to you? Yeah. Yeah. Having a safe home, safe neighborhood. There's, there's probably at least another 10 or 15 more things to represent this group energetically. Now look at, look at what Aaron's got there and what, what else? There's some more things. Yes. Laughter. Laughter. Yes. Empathy. Empathy. Social responsibility. Social responsibility, like a wealth of other like-minded people that are willing to be cause in the matter and take accountability for having this world work. How about that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, like, yeah, I, that's who I want to be hanging out with. Because otherwise it's like, I'm ruined all by myself. Right? It's very lonely. Yeah, Megan. Play. Play. And have we got babies up there? Family. We have family. Well, so let's specify babies. <laughs> yes. Yes, this kindness for ourselves and others. Yes. Uh, yoga. Yoga. <laughs> Good girl. Living sustainably. Yeah, so that we have wealth and a legacy to give to others after, you know, we don't want to like use everything up and say, oh, here's your crumpled up foil, you know, burrito wrapper. Okay. Connection to spirit. Connection to spirit. Yeah, it's like at the top of the list for me. Yeah, absolutely. There, there really isn't any without that. Having an abundant mentality. An abundant mentality, like a mind that's open and that can do that. Yeah, and here? Passion. Passion. And here? Exploration. Exploration. Honesty. Honesty. And here? Energy. Energy. And compassion. And compassion. Okay, like so, and hugging and kissing, you know, sex, all the physical things, right? Like intimacy, yeah, I'm just checking the things you don't haven't said yet. <laughs> yeah, on my list. Okay. <laughs> Appreciation. And the top row? Sad. <laughs> and from the top of the mountain. Because, you know, like to be able to have the intimacy and to have the, um, the safety and to have all the relationships, you know, th this, is, this is wealth. This is wealth. And, and then let's, let's, put, let's go look and put on a little bit of the lens also about money. Let's, let's get money on there too. 
What, 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 what do you have in that one? Yes. To give. To give. Right. So that we have enough so we can give. Charity. Yeah. Charity. Yes. Or, oh, no, that gentleman's wiping his eye. <laughs> Emotion. <laughs> I'm glad I touched you. <laughs> Go ahead. Ethics. Ethics. Yeah. To be ethical, to have some order, some principles, some, you know, yeah, she says, yes, I, I salute you. And like two or three more, yes, community. And this row here, boom, boom. A home. And? Romance. Romance. Okay, and then the last one, top row. Support. Support. Okay, good. So, so can you guys, and you can keep adding. Well, actually, a, a dude, come on, I got to hear from you. Experience. experience to have a wealth of experience and a wealth of the future see it's I mean it's a cool thing it's a cool thing all right oh okay purpose yeah so you see like this is this is wealth now let me um, let me read to you. Thank you, Erin. I mean, just give her a big round of applause. She is a yes for the whiteboard. Yeah. He's awesome. So this is a quote from Archbishop Arch. Excuse me, Tutu, Tutu, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. What he says, God invites each of us to participate in the process of transforming the world, to create a world in which every person knows their infinite and irreplaceable worth and can truly fulfill their potential. So as far as I can see, our job becomes knowing our own wealth from understanding our worth, our infinite an irreplaceable worth, and then this wealth follows. And then many of us are equipped to deal with the world as it is, without judging it, without running from it, actually to embrace it, the banking systems, the educational systems, the, the medical systems, and find a way for us to transform that as ourselves for the future. Okay, so I get you guys all know that. You're like, okay, so what? Now what, Suzanne? I can feel you. I can, I can listen to your listening. Um, so let's see. Right now, I'd like you to take like two minutes each. I'll, I'll have you switch. And uh, high five the person next to you that could be your partner. <laughs> oh, you've got the cameraman. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, LJ. so, so now, um, what you're, what you're going to do there is in the, in the next two minutes, you're going to talk to your partner about anything that you just experienced so far today about your wealth, also about money, any beliefs you might have about money that maybe it's time to overturn. Because remember, what's the focus of today? Clear interference. So share with your partner for two minutes and then switch. So go. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, you know, it'll, it'll be a little bit goofy because some of you that are in the middle really do have something to share. So when it's time to do that, you're just going to stand up and kind of walk over people's feet and come to these mics. But I'd like to hear from... You know, I'd like to hear from at least four people. So people that know that they, they saw something and they, they'd like to share or they have a question, could you just come to the mics now? Is anything from that? Don't, don't worry. It's very safe. It's a very good place. I, I, I'm, yeah. And then the next person that knows they're there. So uh, tell us your name. Hi. Hi, I'm Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Awesome. So my thing that I wanted to share that me and my um, friend were talking about was that we found that it was less of a list and more of a web and that mm -hmm. a lot of the things on it, like, um, for example, time brings money. That's, that's something that we think about a lot. And then eight hours of sleep brings health. Good food brings health. Um, gardens bring food, which brings health. And we just 
thought that that was really, you know, sex brings babies. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess I guess that's it. But it was it was cool to think of it not like all of them coming out of one thing, but them all coming out of each other and contributing to each other. Beautiful. Thank you, Rosie. Thanks. Really great. Really great. See so. There it is. And the next person, run up there. Go ahead. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you. Uh, we, we were talking about how the problem is that when we treat money more than what it is, it's just on its face value, it's a simple tool to exchange goods and services. And the problem comes is when we treat it something more than that. And we think that it's really a gateway to a higher level of being or more happiness. It's really, it's limited. There's a limited amount, amount of it. And instead, we we're thinking, what are other things we could focus on to achieve those things? If our goal is happiness, is our goal is purpose, what are other mediums Does it, if it's not money? And so we're thinking stuff, simple things like relationships or love or gratitude, because those are infinitely available within yourself, but money's limited. So, yeah. Right. I mean, or maybe it isn't limited because that's why we have inflation. Well, no, but I understand what you're saying. No, I do understand what you're saying. And, and so um, my husband's here. Brady just waved. There's Brady. And one of the things he taught me, he said, he talked about how money is um, stored enthusiasm. You know, and then you can keep it moving. And, and, you know, we think of the words, like you said, how we spend our time. Because we're exchanging our life. Yeah, I, th I think the focus yeah. more so that it, it's, it is, it's arbitrary and we, as a society, decide to put a certain value on it. Like, for example, you know, what is my, is my time really worth $15 an hour? Is it 50 Is it 100 Is it $500 an hour? And, and how do you put a value on that? Right. Because it's, it's relative to other things. Right. Um, and if you change your perspective, maybe you'll change the value of what you put on that time or put on that money. And maybe you, you figure out it's not worth anything to you and you find other things to, to fill that desire for, for value. Right. Now, stay, stay, stay right there, because one of the things I want to uh, talk about in, in, in this one is um, there will be times where each of you will need to use the power of your spoken word to determine what you're worth in certain situations, especially as you become more entrepreneurial. And I want people to be looking to see, do you have any ceilings or any accidental barriers or what you believe you might be worth and then where you're potentially acquiescing. I, I don't think that's happening for you, but I, I, I like how you raised it, because this is a major block for many people I work with. Yeah, I mean, I'm not to say that money isn't, isn't important. I mean, it's essential. Like, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I understand the value for my own business. At the same time, it's, it's not the be-all, end-all for the things that I want and need in my life. Yeah, and you actually see that it could be your path to illumination. Yeah, I mean, being it, a young businessman, and it has it has the potential to achieve those things in some ways, but I can't let what how I, how I think most people perceive money limit myself. Yes, and I think it's going to get me there. It's more so just a it's a transactional thing mm -hmm. rather than the actual medium that will help me achieve what it is I want to achieve in my future or my present. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hi. Hey, um, we were talking about. Uh, the belief that if you love, if you truly, truly love what you do, mm -hmm. uh, and you do it relentlessly, and you don't take no for an answer, and you don't get discouraged even when discouragement presents itself, <laughs> um, <laughs> that all that all that will present itself, that right. it, it will all happen. Um, and there's a quote actually from Arthur Graham that I wanted to read because it's it. it I live okay. my life by it. Um, it goes. It, it says, or she said, there is a vitality, a life force, an energy, a quickening that is translated through you into action. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist through any other medium and it will be lost. The world will not have it. It is not your business to determine how good it is, nor how valuable, nor how it compares with other expressions. It is your, it is your business to keep it yours clearly and directly to keep the channel open. You do not even have to believe in yourself or your work. You have to keep yourself open and aware to the urges that motivate you Keep the channel open. Yeah, Martha. And she danced, people. She's a dancer. And she said, and, and it's the business of it. It's our business to keep that open. It's our business to keep ourselves open. Okay, so now, you know, like you guys have it all pretty handled. So we could just leave now and go do yoga. <laughs> Should we just 
do that? Let me just leave now and go do yoga. <laughs> I don't know about you, but for me, money and worth have been like, I got to tell you, when I work with the young people that I do at Lululemon and in other companies, it is more charged than their sexual intimate relationships, talking with their partner about money. N that's not true for this audience, though. <laughs> this audience is fine. They've got it figured out. Is that true? You got it figured out? I know sometimes for Brett and I, and we've got almost 21 years practice, I'm like, you just did what? <laughs> like, that bike? <laughs> no, but like, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. And then it's like, well, then does that mean I get to get a that? Right? Because then it goes into that transactional thing. So you got to this, I got, and then you have four children. And they're watching. Well, now I should be on the knee. But I got the knee. It doesn't matter what they say because they're doing what they got this. Or, 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 oh, you don't spend, you didn't spend enough time with me in third grade. You know, I don't know what it is. But so, I'm telling you, you know, I wonder what it's like for people that don't work as hard as I do on this stuff. They must just have to block it up. Children. <laughs> anyway, so, so what I'd like you to actually look at for fun, because it's why you have me here, is like, what sabotages some of these things? So I'll just tell you some of the things I've run into with people. Um, so you guys have some very good pictures of it, and you're right, you're right there. What I want to help you do is identify any of these interferences, any of these things that could be sabotaging your wealth at this time. So as I was you know, moving through this space, there was one young woman who's, you know, like, good things are happening, you know, n perhaps purchasing a home, perhaps relationship, and then also that resistance and how we move through that and what does it take for her to say yes, so potentially, I'm not sure in that case, but potentially something that could be sabotaging her future wealth would be fear, right? We call that hesitation. For me, sometimes what, um, you know, I have over the years learned how to have a relatively integrated life. Like today, I'll be going back to Vancouver. My children are there because we're going to a family party. So they get to be at different things. And yet, if I'm planning a piece of work I'm going to do and overthinking it when I'm with my children at dinner, right, wouldn't that sabotage my wealth? Because then they grow up with a mother that like always thinks about her work. And I might have good reasons. Oh, I've got two in college. So overthinking could be a sabotage. Um, worry, those of you that have studied with me with above and below the line, any of those things are going to sabotage your wealth. Um, I'm looking at my very good friend here. You know, guilt, guilt often. Like if we're given money, there, it might be loaded, right? It might have a charge on it. And think of all the words we have for, for, for money. We have a charge card. It's charged, <laughs> right? And sometimes when people give you a gift, it's not a gift, right? It's, it's got an obligation on it. So those are some of the things we need to clear. Like, I know none of you do that. I know you don't. I know you get that money, though. I know you've been given it sometimes. And, and parents, the best, you know, the, the, these are the conversations I want you to be able to have with people, OK? So, Let's popcorn style a couple more. What are some of the other ways we could sabotage our wealth? So overthinking, worry, doubt, doubt. Comparison. comparison, ego. Ego. Say, say a little bit more about that one. So sometimes you feel like you need to achieve and you need to be the best, and maybe it drives you to miss some of the things that you should be missing that could bring you more happiness and wealth. Perfect. Right, right, like kind of wanting the limelight when really it was there to serve or do or, yeah, yes. Feeling unworthy. Feeling unworthy. Fear. Yes. Uh, this gentleman here. Uh, the historical patterns. Historical patterns. Name one, like of yours. Meeting expectations of one's father, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. So, so this is exactly the kind of thing I want you guys to get at. So um, I want you to now also turn to your partner, 
Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the bar high. Can I make the bar high for you people? Okay, so I want you to navigate with inner hearing. That might be the first time you've ever heard it, but here's what inner hearing is. I want you to listen intuitively for a number between one and five right now. Okay, you got your number? Okay, write the number down or write it in your head. That's how many ways you sabotage yourself. So if you got one, you do it in one really big ass way. If you got five, you got a bunch of different ways you do it. Now, what I want you to do, stay with me people, stay with me people. So I, what I want you to do now is turn to your partner and identify those ways, okay? All right, I'm gonna give you two minutes. Identify that. <laughs> Oh, do you love your partner? Have you fallen in love with your partner? So much. Aww. 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 No, no. New best friend. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, so we're we're coming up to to when we said we would end. So I want to gracefully tie some things together and and get a couple other questions. So once you've identified what sabotages you, you have the tiger by the tail. You have the keys to the kingdom. Ah, see, she's saying, yes, Suzanne, that is right. I've been telling my mother that. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, what I want you to be able to do is, if you didn't get to write them down, if you have your phone, give yourself a message so that you have that list. Because that's what you're going to get your eye on. Because what you're going to do now is you're going to convert that list into what's maybe the one or two things that you could do to shift out of that, to recognize it when it's happening. So before we do that, I do need at least four clear people that saw something out of what sabotages them, uh, different from who shared new people to come to the mics. So please, and if you're from the middle, just get up. People will love you. Yeah, come on. Uh, I picked the number six, but you only said one to five, so I didn't hear that right. <laughs> I told her she had a, bound, a, a bonus. <laughs> but I whittled it down to five. Uh, five things that sabotage me are guilt, shame, fear, doubt, and unworthiness. Okay. Now, do you have a sense of how you could deal with those? Because they're significant adversaries, right? They're significant imposing forces. Uh, well, my partner and I were talking about like stopping the cycle of mm -hmm. habit mm -hmm. and how I feel guilty, but I'm guilty and then I'm just guilty and that's just what I do. Mm -hmm. So perhaps finding a strategy to stop that cycle of habit yeah. and not making it a habit anymore. Can, can I do this? Now, is there, is there something that you know that you want that's there that these things interfere with? Like, and it could be um, an actual goal. It could be a kind of career. It could be a kind of relationship. But so... Because you know, I is all about vision mm. and goals, so just make something up that's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can always tell people to do make up something yeah. that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, so what might that be for you? A relationship. Like with, a really awesome relationship? Yeah, with a partner. With a partner, like yeah. with a guy? Yeah. Okay, that you'd marry in yeah. like that probably? Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, me too. Because I, I had a relationship and it was really, really hard. And it left me with many of these things. So has that happened to you? Have you had your heart broken? Or yeah. Any of that? Okay, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but so what I, what I want to share with you is something I learned from um, a, a guy who's a, um, an Australian world record holder um, in breath holding, moving. Mm -hmm. So he taught me this. So this could be one way for you. So it's breaking new patterns. So, and your name is? Joanna. Joanna. So as Joanna has her picture of that relationship and of that man and of that goal and of that unfolding for her. See, she's holding that as a picture, right? And guilt, shame, fear, doubt, and unworthiness are only five. So what's the sixth? I can't remember. <laughs> Not I knowing, said, guessing, it. overthinking? Oh, I said um, uh, <laughs> comfort. No, I don't know. <laughs> but I can't remember it. I said it like right off the tip of my tongue and now I've forgotten it. Yeah. It's, it's, I bet it's not knowing. Yeah. Probably. Like second guessing. Yeah. Right? Like you said, like, which is a different form of doubt. So your brain registers words under certain things. So m may I have your permission to call it second guessing? Yeah. Okay. So his name's Tank. Um, and Tank has an Australian accent and I don't do it all that well, but I do want to attempt to do it. So what he does is he creates a map in his mind of what he's going to meet as he reaches his goal of his dive. So he takes a deep breath. Okay. And then he starts his swim and he's swimming. He goes, Oh, 
Hello, guilt. There you are. I knew you'd be there. Good day. He keeps swimming. Oh, hello, Shane. How you doing? Welcome to the neighborhood. I'm gonna keep swimming. Oh, hello, fear. I see you painted your house. I'll keep swimming. Oh, hello, doubt. I see nice family. Oh, hello, unworthiness. And then finally, hello, second guessing. And then he makes it to the goal. So part of it is knowing, getting a sense of where they are in, in our mind, how they feel in their body. All of this is written out in the I goal you work. I goal you leaders can help you with it. And you probably already know, right? You know when you sense one of these. Mm -hmm. So you could just say, oh, that's not me. And the awareness will snuff it. Good girl. Thank you. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. I love wearing a little dress. <laughs> Giddy up. Make sure you tilt this. Yeah, you tilt that. Am I close enough? Am I You're too awesome. close? Okay. <laughs> I never speak at microphones, so it's always You are. Awkward. Good girl. Yes. Yay. Yay. Okay, so my four. Mm -hmm. um, one was worry. Worry. Overthinking. Overthinking. Comparison. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And one that I pinpointed that I'm just phrasing is fear of imperfection. As far as when you have an idea mm -hmm. in your head of how you want maybe your weekend to go, I have to get to this class and I have to look this way and I have to be on time and graceful and friendly. And when it doesn't turn out that way in reality, right. you completely shut down. Right. So that fear of like, it's not going the way I wanted it to. Right. It's not going the way I wanted it to. And then when that starts to happen, what are some of the things on the wealth board that go? Like, is it, is it first your happiness or your presence or what? Yes. Happiness, presence. Um, yeah. That sense of like serenity and meaningfulness. And see, and then all these things work together because then that could say, well, that girl got there on time. You could start comparison. Com Wait, that's not a word. Comparing. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you can come on comparing. You know, and then you could worry and overthink, well, if I would have just got here five minutes earlier, right? So you want to have a way to stop that when it's happening, at least three ways. And, but so let's, let's make up one right now. Like what would be a way that you could, you could cut short your accidental ways of personal sabotage and terrorism? <laughs> <laughs> um, one way I love, and I try to employ it as much as possible, uh, it's by an author called uh, Brene Brown, and she yes. says, if you're yes. having a shame storm, a shame I storm. love that way, yeah, that way of calling it, she says, grab someone right away, someone you, like, you know, they have to be a meaning, not have to be, but they deserve your time, and have, you know, a little one-on-one, -on -one be like, this is coming up, like, I can right. feel the cycle, the cyclone starting, and I, I have really tried to talk it out with someone, be like, oh, I'm having that feeling again. Things aren't perfect. Things aren't the way they, they are supposed to be. And you have found that to work. Now, I want you to, to know why, because it'll be powerful. Do, do you know why that works? Oh, it, not entirely. I feel like it's different each time. No, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to make this up. I'm pretty sure this is correct. I don't, I don't know. I heard Brene talk about it. I'm telling you what I know. See, as soon as you say it out loud, it loses power. As soon as you name it a shame storm, you know it's not you anymore. What? Tell me your name. Carly. Carly shame storm. I'm Carly. I am not my shame storm. I'm having a proximity to a shame storm. <laughs> I might be having a partial possession of a shame storm. But as soon as I tell someone, you get Carly back. Yeah? Yes. So I want you, that's, that's a principle. I am you are. I am Carly. You are the same storm. So you can just be the storm busters. So good girl. Okay. Okay. Good Thank girl. You so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So it's six minutes after 11. I love to be timely. We started about then. I want to know how to land it really lovingly and powerfully. Um, I would like you to turn to your partner and I'm going to give you one minute and I want you to 
Thank them for an insight that you had out of them being here with you. And then I'm gonna have you switch. So thank them, okay, now, wait, I gotta demonstrate it, let's see. Uh, we weren't partners. But so, like I would say, what I actually saw, not just thank you for talking to me, okay? Like what you actually saw this morning, and then I'll have you switch. So please begin that. Even if you know the person really well, talk to them. Come together. This is what they do in Ethiopia, they go. Isn't that cool? Like, they don't have enough wood to make instruments, they just like, ha, and dead. And they have like kind of my wanderlust beads, it's cool. So, so we're gonna land here. I, um, I actually experienced that this particular audience and the way that you brought yourselves and the listening you provided, how many people actually saw something new about how they could short circuit ways that they accidentally sabotage their own wealth? Like, look around the room. You guys did some awesome work. You did, you did that. I want you to understand, I didn't, you did. You took the time to take yourself to wanderlust. You put yourself in a room when you could have been outside. You focused with another human being. You made a difference for yourself and another. We learned about tank and the swim and, and how to duck and cover from the shame storm and how to clear it. This is the work that you've come to do. And I, um, I want you to look at it as, as a launching point for this year. So if you want to, go and set some wealth goals. Set some wealth goals, okay? And, um, and, and I have a song for you. And thank you uh, very much. Bare Naked Ladies, Canada. Let's take it up a little. Thank you, guys.